Hi! So today I want to give you a quick overview over functions in the GDScript language for Godot. So to start out with, there are some predefined functions you are going to be using rather frequently. The most important ones are going to be ready, process, and physics process. The ready function is executed once at the start when this scene you're currently in, so let's say this is a player, whenever this player is first spawned in and basically starts existing as part of your game. Whatever code you put in here is going to be executed just once ever. You can use this to initialize any variables and essentially set up your player so it is usable. Process is going to be executed much more often. Basically, you can put anything here that's not relevant for the physics engine, but needs to be executed regularly. So you can put something like checking input code in here, or updating your player state. Anything that isn't related to physics, you can technically do in here. And physics process, as the name implies, is basically like the process function. It's done in mostly regular intervals. But every time after you change this one, the physics engine is going to update, so you can make sure that this is always synchronized with the physics engine. Delta in both of these can be used to tell how much time has passed since this was last executed. You can use that, for example, to scale movement and things of that sort. One more thing is the func input. You might use that rather frequently. It gives you an event, and then you can check what kind of input you are currently getting. Now let's get to defining our own functions. I will keep the ready function just so we can use it. So what can we actually do with a function? Let's define our own. We call it my function and let's see, we just say print hello. Let's do the most basic function here. So this function doesn't really do anything. It doesn't receive any parameters and it doesn't return anything. All it does is print hello. So if we call that up here and we run this, then down here we get our print statement hello. Now one more thing we can do here is we can specify a return parameter. For example, we can say void, which is the default right now. That means nothing is being returned. We don't currently have a return value here. We could say return one, but that wouldn't be compatible because this says void. And as you can see here, a void function cannot return a value. It's going to complain. If we change this to, let's say, string, now it complains that our return value isn't of the correct type. So we can use this return value to give us warnings whenever we are trying to do something that isn't actually supported. This part is optional, as you saw before, but it can be helpful if you want to know what's going on in more detail. Our return value can be received over here. Let's say we put it into a variable var a equals whatever this returns. So this function is called here. It executes whatever code is in here and the end returns what our return parameter is here. So now if we say print a, we will see it prints hello and afterwards it prints the one we return here. Now we can receive values in here, let's say b comma c, and yeah, now it's going to complain here because this one isn't actually passing anything. To fix that, let's just say we are passing 27 comma test and now it doesn't complain anymore. So if we replace this print with b, so whatever we are receiving here, let's try it, it prints 27 now, which is this value. If we replace it with c, it's going to play print test. There we go. But that isn't quite all we can do here yet. We can also specify what type these things should be. So let's say we want both of them to be strings. We can just say string here and string here. So this colon is used to define what the type should be. Now it's going to give us a warning again, as we want, because the first argument is of type int, and we said here that we can only receive a string parameter. So now if we change this here to a string, it doesn't complain anymore, or if we change this to int, that works fine as well. Now one more thing we can do here is instead of this we can set a default value. So let's say b equals 11, c equals cookie. Now here it's still going to print 27 because b is actually being passed. Of course it's actually going to print test because I'm printing c here, but same thing really. But what happens if we don't pass anything? If we don't pass anything it's going to take the default value c and print that. There we go, cookie. 
doing this is only allowed if we set a default value. If a default value like here isn't set, it's going to complain if this is empty like it did before. So the very last thing here is, right now we can pass this AABB, and as you can see it doesn't complain, even though this here is an integer. But if this is an integer, we would want this here to be an integer as well, in some cases. So if we want to make sure that the type remains the same like we had before when we said int, if we want this complaint here but we also want to set a default value, we can do colon equals and then 11. Now it's actually going to use this 11, which is an integer, to infer which type this here has to be. So whenever this here, whatever we are passing, is not the same type as what we have here, it's going to complain and tell us the argument is of type string, which doesn't match the expected argument type int. So that's how we can use all of that to make sure we always get a warning when passing the wrong type of value. None of these things are necessary to make a functioning program, but they are quite useful to help you figure out where your mistakes might be and really sort out errors ahead of time without much debugging. Let's change that to a number again so it stops complaining. And that's it. This is essentially how you can use functions in Godot. That will be all for today. Bye.